Hello, friends. Bear with me one second while I adjust my camera. This is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I am so excited that you're here with me today. We have a really, really fun card to make. Really quick before we get into it, I want to just remind you that this is my August inspiration calendar. If you want one of these calendars coming up for September, which we'll be releasing here soon, you're gonna wanna make sure you get on my email list. So in the description below this video, there is a link that ha says get my emails. You wanna click that and you wanna sign up to get my emails and then you wanna make sure you confirm your subscription in email. So make sure you do that in order to be part of the email list so that you receive this calendar for free every month. And then I also want to remind you that there's just a few days left, about a, a little over a week left of celebration, which is when you place a 50 or $100 order, you get to choose free product from Stampin' Up. So this catalog is full of free goodies that you get to choose and they've added additional free gifts here that you can per, uh, get for free as well. And then when you place an order of $40 or more, you get the Leaf Label and Amber Gem Combo Pack free from me if you use this host code. So you wanna make sure you put your host code in. Okay, let's get started. We are gonna make a fold back pop up card. We're gonna make this pretty quick because unfortunately, um, I'm having a little bit of an issue with my internet and so I don't want to, for this uh, live to shut off and us not be able to finish. So I'm gonna try to make this a fairly quick uh, live today and we're gonna just jump in and get started. So I pre-colored my mushroom and my gnome that I'm using today. And I'm gonna go over the color combos with you really quick. I used Poppy Parade for the top of the mushroom and his little sleeves. I used Crumb Cake and Soft Suede for the door. I used Ivory for the mushroom base. And then I used Smoky Slate to do some of the shading. And then I used Soft Succulent and our pool party is in the windows. Soft succulent is in the hat, the pants of the gnome, and the feet are with soft suede. So I wanna just show you that really fast so that you know what it is I colored with um, when I colored those. Now this set is so stinking cute, it's a bundle, and I mean, Lots and lots of people have been using it, so I'm sure you've seen it um, multiple times, but I thought I would use it for this card today. And then I have another card to show you after we do this one that is the same thing, but different. So this paper is called Ring of Love Designer Series Paper, and this is free when you place a $50 online order or more. So you cannot purchase this paper, you can only get it for free, but it's fun because it's got um, some Christmas looking paper poinsettias and some kind of birch trees and lots of fall stuff. So we're using that paper. And then we have a piece of soft succulent cardstock. Uh oh. <sighs> Shoot. Oh, I hope you're still there. This is what I'm talking about. My inner webs is having problems. Okay, we're gonna go quick. So, um, before I go too much further, there is a link in the description below the video that will give you uh, a free project sheet for this card, okay? Uh, it's actually for the other card, but it's the same card, just different designs. So we've got five and a half by eight and a half, and we're gonna score at two and an eighth and four and a quarter. Okay, now all the measurements for this are available for you on my blog at that link. So please don't worry about writing the measurements down or anything like that. We've got a piece of the designer series paper that's cut at four by five and a quarter. And we're just gonna layer it down. Now, it's really important that you do this step before you do 
the next step, okay? So you've got to get your designer series paper layered on before you go to the next step for this card. The next step is really the last and only step you need to see because the rest is just about decorating. So I'm hoping uh, I don't have any more internet issues and I can show you all of this before I have something happen again. Okay, so I've got my scored pieces. These are cut at one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. This is four by five and a quarter. Now we're gonna fold it in half, close it up, fold it in half. And we're going to burnish the edge. We're gonna bring our trimmer in. And now this depends, this measurement depends on how large your item is that you're popping up. But I'm just gonna keep it simple and do one inch on each side. So I've got the fold at the top. I'm measuring to the one inch mark on the outside of the trimmer here on the right side. And then I've got my um, ruler here and I'm gonna cut to three quarters of an inch, okay? So we're just gonna go to three quarters of an inch and we're gonna go back and forth a few times to make sure it's cut all the way through. And then we're gonna line this end up with the one inch mark. We're still under, we still have the fold at the top, down, and come down to the three quarters of an inch mark and then back and forth a few times. All right, now we're gonna fold this part back on itself. This just looks like your regular old Z fold card when you do it that way, right? But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna score from our cut lines. So from this line to this line and this line to this line. The easiest way to do that is to use a T-square ruler. You can get these on Amazon. I have my Amazon craft store linked in the description of this video. And then I take and use my take your pick tool and just go along the edge multiple times because you're wanting to score through all of those layers, okay? There's several layers to score through. So make sure that you really do a good job with your scoring. You don't wanna not score well enough. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So all we're doing is connecting a score line uh, on each end of the cut. And then here you're gonna notice this might come up a little. If it does, you can just use glue to glue it down. All right, now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna push in and we're going to pinch. And I can see right here that I didn't quite get that cut line all the way through on this edge. So I'm just gonna fix that really quick. There we go. And I'm gonna do it down here too. It really is important to make sure you cut numerous times. Okay, so now we're upside down. We're pushing this in, and these are coming out towards us, and we're creasing on that score line. Now, you got to be careful because you don't want to crease here. You just want to crease on that score line, okay? And then you're just going to work it, work it, work it over and closed just like so, just like that. And then you take your bone folder and burnish the edges so you get a nice crisp fold. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So here, see here how this is popping up? That's just because we put this on prior to um, doing the scoring. So all I do is I just come in with my glue and add a little glue, just like that. No big deal, super simple. And then it will glue that DSP down nicely and you won't have, you won't have uh, those pieces popping up. All right, now the next step is to add your pieces parts. So I wanna add this piece of Sahara sand and this little um, mushroom house like this. And I wanna take and blend 
around my Sahara sand. Okay, so I'm gonna take my silicone mat to do that. And this is a brand new blending brush, so I gotta get it really inky. And we're just gonna blend the edges. This is an old trick technique that was used a lot back in the day. Um, and I've noticed people don't do it very often anymore where you kind of ink the edges of something to give it a little bit of dimension. And I thought, hey, you know what? I'm gonna do that. And it doesn't look all that impressive, I'm sure, on video, but you can really see a difference in real life. And I think my ink pad needs to be re-inked because I'm not getting a lot of ink here on my... All right, so there's that. And then we're gonna take Memento Tuxedo Black ink and we're gonna ink it up and stamp. And then we're gonna add our little mushroom house with some Stampin' Dimensionals. Man, I think we might actually make this through without any glitches or problems, except maybe just that one. I'm probably jinxing it by saying that. Okay. So don't forget, free project sheet over on my blog. It's available now. You can go over there to get it. As soon as you're done watching the live stream, I'm gonna take photos of this card and add it to the blog post later. But as far as everything else, it's done. Okay, so we're gonna add glue here. You wouldn't wanna add it on the back of this because this is gonna hang over on the top and bottom. So we're just gonna glue it in place like this and just hold it there for a second. And this card base is soft succulent. I'm not sure if I said that earlier. And then for this little feller, we're gonna add a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals on the edge of him because we want him to hang over the edge. So when it closes down, it's gonna look like this and then it's gonna kind of look like he's in front of his house when it's closed, okay? So that's it, that's the whole card. So there he is and then when you open it, you have this whole pop-out centerpiece. Isn't that cute? All right, so I have to show you the other one I made because I, of course, made more than one. This is the other one. So this uses the Apple Harvest, and I used watercolor pencils to color this. And you might notice that these are cut out with a die. On September 1st, you're gonna be able to purchase dies that go with this. And if you don't already have this set, you're gonna be able to purchase it as a bundle and save 10%. Isn't that fun? So there's gonna be a few releases of new products on September 1st that are dies that will coordinate with already existing stamp sets. So if you have the stamp sets, all you have to do is buy the dies. If you don't have the stamp sets, you're actually gonna to get to buy them as a bundle, which is fantastic. So that is the card I have for you guys today. Normally I stick around for Q and A and chit chat. However, with my internet issues and my phone being glitchy, I'm that's what I do my lives on. I'm actually going to go ahead and let you guys go today. And I will go back through the comments as soon as I hang up here off the call. And I will respond to you by typing a message to you. So if you have a comment, a question, a thought, anything, please feel free to comment and let me know. And I can't wait to see you guys again on Saturday. I've already been working on cards. Stop it. Stop. I've already been working on cards for Saturday's blog post and they are so cute. So thanks for being with me and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye-bye.